servicing facility where we do our day-to-day -day operations for both of our stores, one in Scottsdale, Arizona, and one in Sky Harbor. Um, everything comes out of these stores. All the cupping happens here. Um, and that's pretty much what we do here all day long is cup coffee, drink, and roast. It was originated back in 2008. Um, my wife had a desire to open a cafe. And from that time, I spent a year developing a business plan for what I thought would be a great coffee shop. The first plan was Press Coffee Food and Wine, which implemented all three things that, all three things that I'm passionate about, coffee, food, and wine. Um, the store was located on the north side of Phoenix. Uh, prior to that, I went to the American Barista School uh, in Portland to learn everything coffee, attended Coffee Fest, SEAA, uh, try to grasp on as much knowledge as possible before I opened up my store. And so in November of 2008, we started Press Coffee. The name originated from my wife, who said one morning, I've got a great idea. I'm like, what's that? She goes, well, we have Panini Press, we have Wine Press, and we have Coffee Press, and she's in the press. So I looked at her, I said, sounds like we're going to name our place Press Coffee. So that's where the name originated, and we started in 2008. We had a roaster at the time that we were getting coffee from. From that time, about a year later, we started roasting our own coffee, uh, just a little small tabletop bee more, uh, to start getting an idea of what it would be like to roast coffee. From then, about uh, six months later, we purchased an Ambex, started roasting larger volumes there just for the store, and then got into the wholesale side. And just recently, last year, we purchased a new uh, L12 Probot uh, that takes over all of our roasting hours, which is exciting. Um, we pride ourselves not only on the coffee and how it tastes, but we pride ourselves on training our baristas. The baristas are the last piece that the customer sees. And if they're not educated and don't understand the coffee, uh, the consumer's going to walk away with half the experience. And when we talk about seed to cup, I talk about seed to taste, which is the last piece that the customer has in their mouth. What are they tasting? What is the experience they're going to have walking away? And that's where the, the, the education for the baristas is very important to us. So every day or every week, we typically have one to two baristas coming through our, our lab facility here uh, to go through training um, so that they are updated on everything that's, that's new or updated anything that's old or coming through that's, that's new and exciting for press coffee. Um, the education that we provide our baristas and then that gets passed on to the consumer. Um, the important part for the consumer, because the consumer, the general public out there, still kind of has a distinct palate for what coffee is supposed to taste like, um, which is typically going to be kind of smoky and, and charry to a certain extent, because for years that's kind of how coffee was roasted, um, for consistency levels. And for the consumer to drink that coffee, they would add cream and sugar just to make it taste better. Um, with what has happened now, especially coffee, is the roasting profiles have changed to really bring out the nuances of what the coffee has to offer. Um, the way it's developed at the farm, the way it's developed at the roastery, um, the way it's, it's uh, extracted at the, at the restaurant or the coffee bar or wherever at home for the consumer. That has all changed dramatically lately. So it's important that when we educate uh, our staff, that they have full on knowledge of how to explain that to the consumer. And not every customer really wants to know about what the coffee is. A lot of customers are coming in, they want to have their drink for the day and they want to move on. But there is a percentage, and the percentage is starting to grow on a day to day basis of those that are really starting to take an appreciation for what coffee actually has to taste like. Um, we, in fact, generated a new she-shirt recently on the back says, no cream, no sugar, black is back. Um, we're really starting to push that so that the consumers start to understand that there is, without a doubt, different flavors in every coffee from every different country. And it's important for us to be able to respect the farmer who's taking the time to develop an, a, an amazing coffee that the end user, the consumer, has the opportunity to really taste that. We've taken a lot of pride in 
finding coffees from the right places, whether it be from an importer or just recently we have a new direct trade agreement in place um, with a farmer in El Salvador in Buena Vista and his coffee had, a, it had an award called the Cup of Excellence, which is an enormous award to get in the coffee industry. A couple years ago he had that and now we buy our coffee directly from him. Uh, we'll visit his farm this coming year and kind of get to really understand what that coffee's like. Aside from that, we work with importers that are visiting origin often to understand what their farmers are carrying, what the coffees are out there. And we take a lot of pride in making sure that the farmers that we are purchasing our coffee from are getting the, the fairest price, which we still this day don't believe is the fairest price, but we'd like to make sure that, that who our coffee buyers are are definitely putting it out there. Um, the consumer right now, stepping off, we try to use the analogy of, of wine and coffee quite often. Um, and if you kind of zoom in over here, you'll see a, a coffee taster's flavor wheel. Um, you'll see that same type of wheel in the wine industry as well. We try to make this present when we have people come down here so that they start to develop a palate, a muscle memory for their, for their mouth, if you will. Um, so that they can start to understand what coffee has to offer. Uh, whether it, it's got a nutty taste or a weedy taste, earthy taste, tomatoey, berries. Um, there's a whole spectrum of tastes that are out there for coffees. And so when they're in the store, that's what we try to share with them. And we also try to share with them that their experience in coffee can be much larger. But the nice thing about coffee is that the cost for coffee isn't going to be an exuberant amount like you would with wine. Um, I use the analogy of, of Stag's Leap and Two Buck Chuck. You know, if I give you the opportunity to buy one of these wines at the same price, the avid wine drinker is more than likely going to buy the Stag's Leap, especially if it's the same price. Coffee is very much the same, um, but it depends on how it's developed and how it's extracted in front of them. This is going to make a big difference in coffee. Um, over the past year, we've, we've really developed a, a strong passion for truly understanding each coffee that goes out of our door by cupping each and every one of our roasts. Um, it wasn't something that we always did, but now every single roast that comes out, we take samples and we bring it back here within a certain period of time and we cup it out to ensure that the flavor profiles are exactly what we're looking for. Enormous has made enormous strides over the past four years. Um, we've made a huge impact uh, in the Phoenix area and hopefully we continue to build that tradition here uh, by expanding maybe some more stores here in the near future, uh, by expanding our wholesale business and continuing to uh, open this place to the public so that they have the opportunity to come by and really have uh, the opportunity to experience what coffee really has to be. Um, we open the doors to the public daily. If they want to come down, we have tours usually once a week for people to come through and experience coffee as they will. And uh, we like the idea of any consumer at any point in time asking questions about coffee. Because the more that they have, as far as knowledge, the more that they're going to pass the word on. And that's kind of where Press Coffee is right now. Um, we look forward to continuing to build our tradition going forward and, and take it from there. I'm Nanda. I am uh, the Press Coffee Roasters and uh, my journey through, or with coffee I should say, started in Alaska. Um, I worked for Starbucks for four years. I opened up their district up there. I uh, started as a barista, I worked all the way up to store manager, district manager. Um, I was with them for four years. I Once I developed a awareness for coffee and wanting to learn more about uh, how these coffees came to be what they are and why they were called Sumatra or Guatemala or you know all these different things I started educating myself and I found uh, a really small community uh, specialty coffee in Alaska out of a bookstore cafe locally owned um, it was called Panamonium Booksellers and Cafe and they were serving Zoka coffee Seattle and I got an amazing training by them and spent a year learning uh, how to put shot, cupping, pour overs and things like that and when I made the decision to move 
down here to Arizona, I was introduced to uh, another amazing specialty coffee company called Intelligentsia Coffee. Um, and they were serving um, that coffee in one of the bookshops that I was working at as also running a cafe. Um, so through the knowledge and education that I've gotten from Zoka and Intelligentsia, I threw myself into the specialty coffee and learning everything I could and developed a, an amazing thirst for wanting to roast and what was behind the scenes of how you, know, you cook the beans, how all these aspects from everything from farm to cup, or seed to cup, excuse me, um, happened. So within that, within two years of doing that, I uh, met the owner of Press Coffee Roaster, Steve, and we developed a relationship. As far as uh, he hired me on as a barista and took me on as an apprentice, and everything else is history. Now I am the roaster for them. So it was an amazing experience. It took me about seven years to get here, but I'm here. <laughs> My name is Nanda. I am uh, the roaster for Press Coffee Roasters here in uh, Phoenix, and Scottsdale. Um, I take care of a lot of the green beans and uh, quality control and all that for the company. Um, if you guys want to take a look at this right here, this one is an Amaro Gallo, it's an Ethiopian natural. Um, green beans are essential for us, uh, good quality. Um, the farmers, how they process the coffee and everything is essential to how um, the product that I'm going to be roasting and bring out to our customers at the store. Um, there are very different techniques that I use in roasting each individual region. Um, because they are very different and because we are dealing with an agricultural product um, anything affects it, anything that the farmers do to, from you know planting to harvesting to processing to packaging and then when it gets to me finally um, all these little things take effect on how the product as an end result is going to come out and how it's going to taste. Um, my job is to figure out the best potential outcome for that region, um, the flavors, the aromas, the end quality, again, I use that a lot. Um, the final test is when I put it into our roasters, which is over here, this is a uh, Probot 12, it's a 25 kilo. Um, it yields about, I can build about 25 pounds into it and get about 20 pounds as an end result for it. I just finished a Brazil Oberon. Um, as you can see, this is a cooling tray for it. Um, it's a big beast. His name is Brutus, if you need to know that. Um, other than that, I mean, roasting has been a passion of mine for about three years. I've gotten heavily into specialty coffee. Um, it's taken about seven years for me to get here. And it's an amazing journey. Uh, I've never stopped learning about coffee, the regions, and how the whole process works. Um, I don't know. Do you want me to take? I got started in coffee at an Oakville grocery. Uh, from there, I came over to press, and my knowledge has been expanding exponentially since then. I never thought that I would ever have a passion for coffee, but what I've learned here is life-changing, and I'm very thankful for everything I've learned here. I love what I do now. Every day at work is a great day. It's really hard to have a bad day in a coffee shop here, especially with the amount of traffic that we have, the people that we deal with on a daily basis, the regular customers just, you know, make my day. Everyone that comes through these doors is now a friend of mine because of what we do, the interactions we have, and uh, the products we create. So, um, we have a cup of coffee. Uh, we have mandatory trainings we go through. Um, we try to do it on a monthly basis where everyone will go to our roastery, receive one-on-one -on -one support with our trainer, Adriana. She, uh, she makes a great cup of coffee and 
where that comes from is just what we have available here at the store, the products themselves, and uh, the materials we're given to brew for our customers, including Chemexes, Clevers, uh, B60s, our espresso machine, rocks, end of story, can handle anything thrown at it, lines customers to the door, and uh, the end result, the end product, usually is displayed very well. We have great artists here at the store, the latte art that we send out on the end line is phenomenal, and it just makes people's day when they, uh, when they experience that kind of coffee, and it's, it definitely opens people's eyes up to a whole new world of coffee, uh, breaks them away from their day-to-day -day routine of coming in, grabbing a cup, and going. They actually just take the time to sit down, enjoy it, and uh, everyone is willing to learn, and that's the best part. Is everyone really is interested once they leave our door and why we create and how we create uh, such a good cup of coffee. It helps maintain keep consistency on the bar. Uh, automatic dosing grinders, which we dial in all throughout the day. Make it a nice well strip. Pressure profiling on this machine allows us to pre and post infuse our coffee at different. Uh, well, this shot's not going perfectly at all. It's a bad shot. Our Tanzanian pea berry has a nice candy, candy ginger taste right up on the front end. It's real bright, it's got a great sweetness, and the finish kind of falls along the lines of apricot or, uh, you know, lately it's been somewhat vegetable, almost like a cherry tomato sweetness on the, on the back end. So it's got a great overall finish. Um, I love it, I, but it's not one, like I said, from milk. Um, just as is or um, Americana, the only way I would serve this espresso 